Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Financial Madness. My name is Kozan and I'm here to help you be better with your money. So in this episode, we're going to be doing things slightly differently. I'm going to be talking about some news that happened last week when Boris Johnson at the virtual Conservative Party conference promised to fix the broken housing market. And he was going to do this by introducing 95% mortgages for first time buyers with the aim to change the generation to rent to a generation to buy. This has obviously got a lot of first time buyers excited. So let's understand what we know so far. So when I first heard this news, I was actually quite excited. I thought, great, another scheme to help first time buyers onto the property ladder, which is very much needed because as everyone knows, the hardest bit when it comes to buying a property is building a pot big enough to put down as a deposit. And with house prices continuing to rise, that pot is only getting bigger and bigger. And with lenders typically requesting 10 to 15% deposits on the mortgage, well, it's actually more like 15% nowadays, for the majority, that is a lot of money that we're talking about here. With average house prices here in the UK around about the 250K mark, here you can see the massive differences in deposit amounts depending on the rate, with 5% being considerably less than the 10 to 15% norm. So I continue to do some research into Boris's new scheme and unfortunately there isn't much information out there at the moment. Actually aside from the headline there isn't actually much to go on. So that led me down the road into asking some questions and figuring out what we can probably infer from this new deposit scheme. So the first one being is wait don't 5% deposit mortgages already exist? And yes they do although in a very limited capacity. Before the coronavirus pandemic, it wasn't uncommon to see some lenders offering out 5% deposit mortgages. However, all the best in trying to find a 5% deposit mortgage now because due to recent times, a lot of banks and lenders have been removing 5% deposit mortgages off their shelves and even some 10% deposit mortgages. This is because banks and lenders are taking a risk averse approach my God, that's a tongue twister, and are taking down their most riskiest of products, which is sadly the 5% deposit mortgages. So the fact that these 5% deposit mortgages already exist suggests that Boris's new scheme will have some government involvement or contribution in some shape or form, or at least they'll push legislation to ensure that there are more 5% deposit mortgages on the market. How they will do this exactly, we are yet to find out. The next question we could ask is, could this potentially be the next iteration of the help to buy equity scheme? For those that don't know, the help to buy scheme is an existing government scheme that help first time buyers get onto the property ladder by putting down 5% deposits on new build homes with the additional help from the government in the sense that they also buy a proportion of your property to help you secure a better mortgage. So if you wanna find out more information about the help to buy equity loan, I've actually already done a video on this, so I'll put a link in the cards now and in the description box. So do check that out if you've got any more questions. So with the latest help to buy scheme expiring on the 31st of March, 2023, it has been suggested that this could replace that iteration of the scheme. And if it's true, that means we won't see Boris's 5% deposit mortgages come in and around about 2023, which is a long time away. However, if you assess the current housing market, I actually believe this could be true, or at least I don't think the scheme is gonna come in in the near future. That is because there is currently far too much demand for mortgages than there is supply. As banks have to abide by the COVID safety regulations, this means they have less staff at their disposal, which means the already long mortgage process is taken even longer. And I can vouch for that. My mortgage process is currently clocking on to almost four months. And with Rishi Sunak already pumping up the demand earlier this year by introducing the stamp duty tax holiday, which sees buyers potentially saving up to 15,000 pounds in tax when buying a property, banks have actually tried to deter the increase in demand by increasing interest rates on their mortgage products and having a mass removal of five to 10% deposit mortgages off their shelves, which is why I said earlier, you kind of need to be looking at 15% deposit mortgages if you stand a good chance in obtaining a mortgage in these current times. So saying that it simply just doesn't make sense for Boris's scheme to be introduced in the near future because banks are already struggling to meet the demands as of now, never mind another boost in demand that is likely to come once the scheme is enforced. So why announce this now? 
So aside from the fact that legislation does of course take time to pass, this is obviously a way to bolster the confidence in the housing market and in the economy as a whole. When the coronavirus pandemic started, many expected the housing market to actually crash, but this doesn't seem to be the case. Obviously helped by the stamp duty tax holiday, coupled with really low Bank of England interest rates, this has seen the amount of mortgage applications reach a 12 year high with house prices continuing to rise. Many are predicting that the housing market is teetering on collapsing. So this announcement now could be a method to encourage economic activity to, as I mentioned earlier, to bolster the housing market to help make up for other impacted areas within the economy due to the coronavirus crisis. Then it got me thinking, this all feels awfully familiar. Am I feeling some sort of sense of deja vu? So to understand why banks request high deposit amounts, we need to cast our minds back to the early 2000s when 5% mortgages were all the range. They actually made up almost 50% of the mortgage products that was in the UK economy at that point in time, compared to now where it only makes up 1.25%. Banks were also doing far less checks on the buyers in question to see if they can actually afford the mortgage that they were applying for. There was less regulation on the banks on how much money they had to hold. So they were just splurging out on mortgage products left, right and center because we were in the middle of a housing boom at that point in time. However, we all know what happened next. More and more people were unable to afford repaying back their mortgage, which meant that we saw an increase in the default of mortgage loans, which then caused the buyer market to slowly dry up, which then caused house prices to fall because there was no one else buying. And obviously the banks, which didn't have enough capital to cover their sunken costs, either were declared bankrupt or had to get a huge bailout from the government. The housing market crashed, causing one of the worst economic recessions in history. So as a measure to stop this happening again, financial regulators and the Bank of England introduced new regulations to ensure that the banks were lending money more responsibly. This saw the deposit requirement for mortgages shoot up to 10 to 15%, stricter and more thorough financial checks on the prospective home buyer, and making an absolute requirement that at all times, banks need to hold a certain amount of capital in their reserves to ensure that they can cover any sunken costs. And it is this increase in regulation that can be blamed for us now for seeing higher deposit requirements when getting a mortgage. So Boris's new scheme seemingly seems to be going against what all these regulators have fought to try and do to ensure that this kind of housing crisis doesn't happen again by representing a potential return in the poor lending practices that we saw pre-2008. So those are my thoughts on Boris's new scheme. Obviously, there isn't a lot of information out there at the moment, so I have just been deducing what I can get from what we know so far. However, I did mention at the beginning of the video, I was very excited about this scheme, but now I'm feeling a little bit skeptical about how this scheme will actually work and what this means for our economy in the long term. However, that's not to say that I'm not interested to see the introduction of more 5% deposit mortgages onto the market, because as I mentioned earlier, it will be helpful to the first time buyer market, especially. So I will be keeping an eye out to find out more information as and when they are released. And I'll probably do another video to update this one once that information does come out. But as for now, I would be a bit cautious when jumping on this 5% deposit bus. If you're already saving or planning to save for a deposit for your new house, I would suggest still aiming for around about 10 to 15% as a deposit. So you have that goal to reach. And once more information comes out on this 5% scheme, then you can deduce whether it's a good financial opportunity for you. Cool, so what are your thoughts on Boris's new scheme? Are you really excited? Are you a bit of a skeptic like I am? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, if you thought this video was really useful, please do give this a thumbs up. And I release a video every single Monday. So if you wanna keep up to date with that, hit the subscribe button. See you later.